everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm really glad that you're here today. I'm Jody, and I am gonna walk you through a really fun everyday makeup look with a little bit of winged liner, little bit of eyeshadow, but a look that says it's winter, I've put on some makeup, but I'm not trying too hard. It's a, just a quick everyday look that works for people that don't have a lot of time, but wanna look like they have on makeup, but it's also great for office as well. So whatever your day-to-day -day routine looks like, I think you'll enjoy this quick tutorial that is all about the eyes. Because as they say, the eyes are the window to the soul. And there are days when I wake up and my eyes are so puffy, you would think my soul was the marshmallow Stay Puff Man because that's what my eyes would tell you. But as the day goes on, we want to look alive and alert and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I wonder where the bushy-tailed part comes from in that analogy. Bright-eyed I get. Of course, we all want to be bright-eyed. There's just a youthfulness, there's a brightness, there's an alert and awakeness to it. But as far as bushy-tailed, I, I won't have a tutorial for you on that. I have no idea what that even means. All right, so if you're ready to give your eyes just a quick pop of something without a lot of shadow using products that you probably already have, grab whatever eyeliner you typically will use, whether it's blue, black, liquid, gel, or pencil, grab your highlighter, grab your contour powder if you have one, or a matte light brown eyeshadow, your favorite mascara, and we're good to go. So if you're ready, I'm gonna take you back in time and we will do it together. And I'll show you this cute sweater that I found. That's all coming up, stay tuned. Simple eye routine, simple eye routine, simple eye routine. Come on, Jody, try to keep this a simple eye routine. If you guys have watched my channel for any length of time, you know that I have the best intentions of starting out with just a little tiny wing, or sometimes I claim this will be a no wing look. That never happens. Today, however, is gonna be a very slight, everyday natural wing that anybody can wear any day. Now, I'm gonna pause kind of throughout this video and make some modifications, if you will, for those that wear glasses. I am starting to need to wear reading glasses more and more often, and I know many of you wear glasses, and sometimes it's difficult to create these looks with glasses, or you wonder, is it gonna wear the same way? So I do wanna talk through that, just to give you some ideas to help your eye look last longer if you're wearing glasses. And for me, I know it's harder to even put on makeup with my eyes. So I have a magnifying mirror, just the kind that switch, it's an iHome one, and I, when I go to do my eyes, I just flip it to the magnified side, and yes, sometimes that shows you way more than you wanna see, like where the eyebrows are grown out and you need to pluck them, or where the eyebrows are, and sometimes they are gray. Just the perils of age, but we love it, we love it. Okay, so let's get started. I have my face, my base, and my blush, and my highlighter, and whatever little contour I have is already done. We're gonna move right into the eyes. And I like to start with my eyebrows because I just feel like it, we've all been taught it frames the face, it frames the face. Yes, it frames the face. And I don't feel like my eyes are ready to get started. I kind of think about it as it's the lip liner for my eyes. Does that make sense? Anyway, it's a new year, so I'm just gonna have a new way of looking at things, like my eyebrows, apparently. All right, so I'm just using the Anastasia of Beverly Hills, and I'm using this in blonde. This or the Pure are my two favorite, favorite eyebrow pencils, really because the color seems more true for me. I don't like to have a really warm eyebrow. I don't want a cool tone. I do want just a light, sort of neutral tone to my eyebrows. If you had to choose one way or the other, I would choose a little to the warmth side, but try to stay neutral if at all possible, unless your overall look is very warm or very cool. This blonde is just a nice natural color for me, so I'm just gonna go and brush up everything. That's one of the reasons I love the Anastasia is because it has this brush, and that to me is, I love being able to brush my brows because just that, I could go with just a clear gel to hold them in place and leave it like that. I just think they're a little bit more dark and cool, if that makes, they're a little more olive-y color, I think. So I like to just give them a little bit of warmth without too much, and that's why the blonde works so well. I'm just gonna take that and pencil it up a little bit. And I'm gonna start at the very tip and just make little feathery lines across the bottom and because I don't have a natural line anymore, I've just lost enough volume to have a little bit of a sporadic line, I just like to create that under belly of a line, if you will. 
and then my brows stop there, which is about half a brow short than I want it to. So taking the symmetry of our face, it really should be about right there. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit shy, but we're gonna go with some pencil and just go right to there. If you look at youthful eyebrows, they are longer. And so one of the telltale signs of an aging face or those of us that are more mature is our eyebrows might still have a point, they might still be full, but they're typically not as long. So don't forget to elongate your eyebrows to really give that youthful appearance. And of course, eyebrows are meant to be sisters, not twins. You can tell that my microblading is, what's this, 2023. So it is seven years old and you can tell, that's probably why my brows had a cool look to them before I warm them up with a pencil is because that ink over time, it's gonna fade. You can certainly redo it. It was, and maybe by now, again, that was seven years ago, maybe there's a more, um, pain-free, less traumatic way. I'm being really dramatic. It was one of the most painful procedures I've ever done. And I've done Yule therapy. If you've ever done Yule therapy, you know how, <laughs> how painful that is. These brows were way more painful. Now, again, seven years ago, hopefully a lot has changed in the torture chamber of beauty arena, and they found a way to make it less painful. So I don't know if I would do it again. Part of the reason I don't think I would do it again is just because as we age, our skin tends to lose volume and that volume causes everything to sag. If I were to have my eyebrows done now, then I would just wonder if in seven years from now, will they then be sitting way down here? And I don't want them here, I want them back up here. With a pencil, I can at least paint them back up here if I need to over time. But if they're tattooed on, I just wonder if they're gonna fall too far on my face, giving me way more space here than what I want. Now you can certainly continue to carry contour, but it's only gonna do so much. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Have you done it recently? Have you done the microblading recently? Would you do it again? I'm, I'm kind of torn. Only because it was easier. It was definitely easier to do your makeup and not have to worry about the brows. But I kind of like the idea of being able to customize my eyebrow look, customize and change the color of my eyebrows as I change my hair color. If I go lighter, I can lighten my brows. If I go darker, I can darken my brows. And I don't feel like I have the ability to customize them as much if I have them microbladed. So I'm torn and I don't know if it's just me, but at the beginning of the year, that's when I really start to look at different, not cosmetic procedures per se, not that I'm against it. I don't judge anyone that does it. You do what makes you feel the most uniquely beautiful. That's what this channel is about, is embracing you and how you wanna do things and celebrating individual decisions and individual uniquenesses and really allowing everybody to be themselves. That's what I love about this channel is that no one's that opinionated in the comments that says you must do it this way or that way. I just feel like I wanna look at what's the latest nip and tuck procedures. Maybe that's what I'm thinking about. Just the non-permanent, non-invasive, non-surgical, but things that maybe you don't need to go under the knife for. I saw recently a soft wave. Have you guys seen this or have you heard about this? It's, it's a tightening procedure that you can do. It's, I think it's a laser the way it looked on the demo on the TV that they showed and it looked the, the esthetician said it's not very painful, which I felt like she was going, it's not very painful, but she didn't wink. But I just felt like, mm, don't know if I believe you, but it looked, it was said to tighten your skin. So I'm like, that would be, I would go for that. I would go for that, no downtime. She said, you can walk out of the office and you are good to go, it will tighten over time. So I'm gonna maybe look into that. If I do it, I'll take you guys along with me. Um, but I need to do a little more research. I had just heard of it. So if you've had Softwave, I'd love to hear from you and see what you think or the results good. Please tell me the honest truth. Was it painful? I have a medium to high tolerance to pain, so I could probably get through it, but the older I get, I feel a little bit less strong when it comes to some of that stuff. Things are hurting a little bit more. Why is that? Okay, let's go on because now I look really crazy with these dark eyebrows. I've gone over my eyelids with the concealer that I used underneath just to cover up any discoloration, any purpleness. It's not so discolored that I needed a color corrector. If you are really purple or blue, then you wanna grab a color corrector that will help neutralize that tone before adding your concealer. For me, the concealer is thick enough. I use the N20 
Tarte Shape Tape and it's thick enough and gives enough of a color deposit that that's sometimes all I need. Now I will admit that if I've eaten sugar the day before, there's more purple to this area and it requires an extra product being the color corrector and then the concealer, which that in itself has been sort of a deterrent to eating sugar, is then I don't have to add two products in this delicate, very wrinkly under eye area. Take a look and see if you wake up with more purple on some days than others, then just try eliminating sugar for a day and see if you don't wake up with that dark of a purple color under your eyes. It's not gonna work for everyone. It's not the reason for the purpleness for everyone, but it definitely was a big eye opener for me. So I'm just gonna grab a synthetic brush. This is the Angie Hot and Flashy A505. And I'm gonna go in with the Paint Pot by MAC. This is in Painterly. This just gives a nice neutral color. If you've got darker skin, you'll wanna go a shade or two darker than this. You just want it to be a shade lighter than your overall foundation. That's all we're trying to do is just give a little bit of lightness to your eyelid without really highlighting that it is a lighter color. And I'm just gonna go over that whole eyelid space. I like this brush because it allows me to really carve out that brow. See how nice that looks when you're able to just sharpen that brow a little bit without getting too crazy of a line. We don't want it to look as though you highlighted or contoured really sharp lines. We just want a nice natural carving to the bottom of our eyebrow. And then once I put it on with the brush, I like to go back in with usually my ring finger because it's just a smaller one and just press all of that paint pod into wrinkles. You can use an eye primer and some people love eye primers, some people don't. An eyelid primer, I'm not a big fan of them unless I need my eyeshadow to last really for a really long time or if I'm using a very bright, like a bright blue or bright green eyeshadow and I really need it to adhere to something neutral behind it, then I will use a primer but in day to day, not so much. And you guys, I'm so sorry, this little nasally thing of mine. I, I, I know I'm not getting sick, but it's like just enough of a head cold to be annoying. So I apologize for that. And we're just gonna carve that out again across that eyebrow and then cover everything. That's what I love about this look is it is, it's taken me a little longer because I'm visiting with you guys, but normally you can do this in like three minutes and it just gives it a nice, soft, natural look. Now what I'm gonna do is go back in with a paint pod, and this is Bear Study. This is my favorite non-everyday paint pod, and this is in Bear Study. I think about the painterly as part of my everyday. It's like my blush, it's like my concealer, it's what I wear every day, that's this one. But this Bear Study is just a nice little shimmer it complements almost any highlighter that you wear, unless it's more of a bronze highlighter. But if you wear a golder highlight or if you wear a rose pink highlight, this is a nice complement just to touch on the lids. If you don't have this, no worries. Please don't feel like you need to go add it to your cart. Just whatever highlighter you use, preferably cream highlighters as we age, that it's much more forgiving on our pores than a powder highlight. Then you can just take it from here right up to your eyelid, and we're gonna do that with another 505 Angie Hot and Flashy brush, another synthetic brush, and I'm just gonna go in really light-handed. You can always add more, but I like to just dab it and then pull it across the bottom, and I like to just do both sides because I don't have to come back to cover it. I can just do one side and then one side. It's so lazy, but I know like this is such a big effort. Okay. And I'm gonna start again with this. I don't want over my whole lid. I just want it to go across the bottom of the eyelid, right at the lash line from corner to corner. And if you don't have a special brush, I'll do my other eye with my finger so you can see how easy it is. And it pretty much looks the same. And again, we're not wanting to go everywhere because we do have wrinkles. If you don't have wrinkles on your eyelid, that is awesome. Many of us in this age bracket do. That's why we want to keep this highlighted cream just about one strip, a width of the brush, or if you're using your fingers, just about the width of your finger. I'm gonna do it on this side with just my finger and then take off any chunky area. You could always dab this on the back of your hand if you feel like it's just an uneven application on your fingers. And then I'm just gonna go right across my lash line. 
I'm gonna go pretty exaggerated on this side just so you guys can kind of get a sense for the thickness in terms of the height that you want to put this. And then you just want to blur that top line so that it doesn't look like a strip. Next I'm gonna grab the Angie Hot and Flashy A504, which is this size. And for point of comparison, this is the 502. So 504, 502. See the difference in size? It may not seem like it's that big of a difference in terms of the, the width of the brush, but where we wanna place this next color is pretty precise. Now, whether you have hooded eyes, whether you have droopy eyelids, or you have setback eyes like I do, the smaller brush is really a critical part here because you don't wanna spread this next color too much because we don't want it to look like there's color at all on our eyelids. So if you have a couple brushes, look at them side by side and grab the smaller of the two. Then pick up your contour. If you don't have a contour, then use a bronzer, but just make sure that your bronzer isn't too warm. Bronze is meant to warm the skin, where a contour is really meant to shade and shadow. Your contour, compared to your bronzer, should be more on the brownish grayish side, where your bronzer is gonna be much more brownish orangey warm. If you only have bronzer and not contour, that's okay. Just go really light handed on it because we don't wanna warm this up to look like there's an eyeshadow. We wanna create a shadow in the background. So that's where your contour is more valuable of a product in this scenario. Now, I don't wanna use this natural rainbow horseshoe shape that I have. Sorry guys, I cannot wink with two eyes. I've tried my entire life, I can't do it. And so we're just gonna use this eye and luckily it's the one closest to the camera. So I'm just gonna take this and we're gonna go and I'm just gonna lightly draw because I don't want to give that kind of a look. What I really wanna do is pull this out. If you have hooded lashes, you're gonna wanna go right behind your lashes from your inner tear duct right to above your lashes and start to create a little bit of a line to go out with your shadow. If you have droopy eyes, same thing. You're gonna wanna put this pencil over that droopy eyelid right at the center of your, lining up with your tear duct. Same thing, pull this contour shadow out more straight to elongate the eye. And in my case, I'm just not gonna follow the rainbow I'm gonna go right above the tear duct where my crease starts and follow that arch up, but then right here, I'm gonna go rogue. And not completely straight. Obviously, you're gonna to wanna to start right here where your tear duct is and maybe a nice slight arch, but then pull it out here. Now, if you have droopy lids, you might have to hold that lid a little bit in place to go on top of the lid, but that's exactly what you wanna to do to give that lid an appearance that it's farther back and not as front and center and droopy. And then we're just gonna go out just about to where that elongated tail is that we created with our eyebrow and softly pull that back in. You don't wanna be able to really see this line. You are just creating the illusion of a little bit of shadow. If you curl your lashes, we're at the stage where you're gonna wanna curl them. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure that you use a waterproof mascara if you have glasses. That also helps from leaving those marks on your glasses from long lashes or leaving marks down here. My husband always calls this the torture device, which I totally get it. I absolutely get it. But gosh, what a difference it makes. Just makes them come to life a little bit. It's like, it's like the hat on Frosty. Oh my gosh, maybe I've watched way too many holiday movies. Now we're gonna start with our eyeliner. I prefer a pencil eyeliner simply because it is more forgiving on loose skin on the eyelids. So for example, if you're gonna go create a line, there's just gonna be some folding in those lines that with liquid liner, when you go back in to fill those creases or those wrinkles with a liquid eyeliner, you just have to be so precise. And I find that as it's harder for my eyes to see, if you wear glasses, for example, and it's just, just it's harder to really get close enough to a mirror to put on your makeup, I just feel like a pencil is more forgiving. The other thing I love about a pencil is you can sharpen it on a regular basis, and by sharpening your pencil with a clean pencil sharpener, you're removing that bacteria that over time has built up, which extends the life of your liner, whether this is eyeliner or lip liner. 
For a full rundown on how long you should keep cosmetics and which cosmetics expire, I'll link my latest video right up here that I just did. It was eye-opening for me, you guys, as I did some research for that. I was really surprised at how you can extend the life of many of your beauty products just by removing your cosmetics from the bathroom because the shower, their steam, steam is moist, and then not setting them right next to a makeup mirror because there's heat usually coming from those light bulbs unless they're LED and it's heat and moisture that really creates the growth of the bacteria. If you can put your makeup somewhere else, it really helps preserve the life of your cosmetics. So I've sharpened this again. I try to do that every few days, both on my eyeliner and my lip liner, and then I am good to go and I know it's clean. For this look, you just wanna take your pencil and go to where your last eyelash is on your upper eyelashes. So where does that last eyelash stop? that is where you wanna start your eyeliner pencil. And from there, you just wanna make a soft little line to where you can see it with your eye open. And for everyone's eye shape, that's gonna be a little bit different. For me, I liked it to come just to the end of my eyelid that's showing. Once my eyelid starts to sh get covered by my upper eyelid, that's when I will stop. Now, for those of you that have a droopy eyelid or hooded eyes, you're gonna to wanna to extend that farther so that you can get some benefit of that eyeliner. And the reason you wanna start where the last eyelash is is because that helps from you getting that look where your eyeliner is too low, ultimately pulling down or weighing down the outer corners of your eyes. Because as, that, as we age, our eyes already droop in the outer corner, but you don't wanna add any droopiness to that because you can see what that does to the overall look. Now here I'm exaggerating because I'm pulling them down. But it gives you a sense of what eyeliner below your corner of your eye can do to the overall look. And take a step back in the mirror and go, gosh, are the angles the same? If not, this is the time to fix them because you just don't wanna have one eyeliner here or here and it's so easy to do. And you guys, I never get the angles right the first time. So I always have to go back and just adjust. Another thing to think about is as you are pulling that eyeliner out, you don't want it to go too much farther than your actual lashes. So if you've got shorter lashes, then you may not want that winged liner to go out too much farther than where your eyelash stops. That's a good rule of thumb. I always take it just a little bit further because why not? But I started this video saying I was not gonna do that. And we'll go back and clean up that the underside of that line to polish it up in a second, so don't worry about that. Next, I'm just gonna take that top part, the top tip where we started, and just make little tiny strokes, knowing that I wanna eventually blend that in at the center, very center of my eye. So for me, that is right here. And if you need to put a dot there to kind of tell yourself where to stop, you can do that. That's a good way to make sure that you don't go too far in if you want just a nice everyday look. And then I just want it to look as though that line just disappears into my lashes. And I'm using black eyeliner. This look will look great with a dark brown. It will look good with a burgundy. A winged liner can look good with a dark green or a dark blue. I could have used a silver just to go with this shirt, which by the way, is this not the cutest shirt you guys ever? It's it's Kate Spade. It's like a little, it's like a little snowflake. I'm just not ready for Valentine's Day yet. Like we just got over with Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa, and now we're already seeing in stores, Valentine's Day stuff up everywhere. It's the first few days of January. So I just wanna embrace winter and the beauty of winter. Can we can we do that before we start breaking out Valentine's Day stuff everywhere? Which by the way, I don't know how you guys feel about Valentine's Day. I just think it's so unfair for men, Valentine's Day. Yes, we should all have a moment to feel loved and feel special, but that moment shouldn't be one day a year. It should be every day. In fact, I tell my husband, please don't acknowledge Valentine's Day I don't want, I just don't, I remember working in an office in my 20s and it just became this competition like which girl could receive the biggest bouquet of flowers. And it was almost like a, not a popularity contest, but it was almost like an ego driven, oh, you know, and it, no one talked about it and no one said, I hope I get the biggest bouquet of flowers, but it just felt like there was this thing and the pressure of your significant other to go, you know, buy you these big flowers. It just seems like, I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm just bah humbug about it. I'm just not a fan of Valentine's Day. I mean, I love love, but I love love every day. I don't love love where there's pressure 
for someone else to go show me their love. My husband is awesome that way. And what I did there is I just took some molecular cleansing water, got it on the end of this Q-tip and just cleaned up that line just to make sure that we have everything nice and straight. And then we'll go back in with some concealer, which I'm gonna grab this Age Rewind. I'm just kidding. If you guys saw my video, my last video, you know I would never ever use this again. Sorry, Maybelline. I just can't. I don't even know why it's still sitting here. Let's just throw it away right now. There we go. I don't know what, there is a garbage there. I didn't just toss it in the corner. I use the Tarte Shape Tape underneath my eyes. You can use whatever concealer you want. We're just gonna clean up that line. That's all we're really trying to do. Now I wanna go in with a small little blending brush. This is the BK Beauty 204, really small, thick, uh, soft bristles. And I'm gonna go back to whatever shadow you use to create a little bit of a uh, shadow up on your upper lids. I'm trying to achieve two things with this under eye technique. I wanna create a shape to my eye. So we've shaped the upper lid. I wanna shape the bottom side of my eye and I wanna give a little bit more depth to my eye lashes. So I typically don't put on mascara under my eyes. So this really does help create a little bit of a depth, if you will, so that my eyes aren't floating. And for this, I'm creating that lash line from the corner of my eye, not where the lashes started like we did on top, but from the corner of my eye to where my lashes stop on the inside. That's where you wanna stop this shadow. And then I like to just go back with a clean fluffy brush and just make sure I didn't drop anything underneath. Now we're gonna pay some attention to our eyelashes. If you have an eyelash primer, you can certainly use one. I've been using the Clinique, but I've heard some good reviews about the Dior eyelash primer, so I have ordered it. I don't have it yet. But I'm gonna use this new Chanel mascara. It's Neor Allure, I think. It's got a gold lid. You just push the lid and then you pull it out. The wand is very much like a comb. It's very thin. And as we age, I like more of a comb type application because it's easier to wiggle your lashes if you can't see as well. So if your eyes are more aging and you just cannot see as accurately as you used to be able to, a smaller brush like this will allow you to get a little bit more aggressive and not end up with so much of a mess. Some of those bigger, fluffier, thicker brushes, as we are, as it's harder for us to see, I find that I spend more time cleaning up where I put that brush because I couldn't accurately see it as well. So that's why I like these smaller ones. I like to go to the bottom of the lash line wiggle it all the way as we come up. And if you're comfortable, you can always look down and take this at the top and curl your lashes from the top as well. And then I like to go back over them and just make sure that I haven't left any clumps. Wow, that is a pretty impressive mascara. I have to say, I don't remember, I'll link this below you guys, I don't remember what I paid for, it's it's new. But wow, look at the difference in those two eyes. Now going above your lashes like I did and curling them up, that really does help coat your lashes. It doesn't take a lot of mascara to coat your lashes. In fact, the more mascara you put on, they, it can actually start to weigh your eyelashes. And as we age, our eyelashes are just more fragile and every one of them is like worth their weight in gold. The other thing I'm realizing about this mascara is that it sort of prevents you from pumping the air into your mascara, which helps preserve the life of the mascara. So I, 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 I'm liking this so far and I'm really loving the way it works on my lashes. Now, if you, again, is if you wear glasses, then after this step, you really want to set this with a waterproof mascara, which we're going to do, but then also put some light translucent powder just underneath your eyes so that A, you're setting your foundation or whatever you put here, and that translucent powder will help keep your lenses from sliding and sort of creating a wear mark in your foundation. Where And where I go on top of my lashes, I really like to only do that on that outer half of my lash. I think it gives a little bit more of that fox eye to the lash and then just go in and clean those up, get rid of any chunks, which I have to say this mascara does leave a few lumps, but I don't know that a mascara, I don't know a mascara that doesn't and it cleans up pretty well. 
And I'll finish up with the third and final coat of mascara, and this is the Waterproof uh, Defensals from Lancome. This is my new favorite waterproof mascara. I like to do this every day, but especially if I'm trying a new mascara and I'm not sure how it's gonna transfer underneath my eyes, then I will for sure use a waterproof. If you're not somebody that likes to wear so many layers of mascara, I would still finish your mascara with a coat of waterproof, and maybe you only do one coat of regular mascara and then one coat of waterproof. This has just been a tip I learned a long time ago, and it really does save me from having those flakes of mascara underneath my eyes, the darkness that starts to transfer with time. And if you find that that still happens to you, then maybe just use a little bit less emollient eye serum underneath your eyes when you're doing your morning routine so that your makeup doesn't have something so slippery that it's trying to sit on top of because that helps to melt that mascara into that more emollient serum, if you will, and that can help the melting sliding effect, which is not what we're after. All right, I think that does it. Take our hair out of our clips, and that is it, you guys, a real simple, everyday winter look with just a little bit of shadow or highlight if you have it. No need to go purchase new products. You probably have a highlighter you can use and a contour powder that you can use and you're good to go with a nice fun winter everyday, I didn't try too hard kind of look. I hope you enjoy the look, enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.